Hey, everyone. Hey, bag makers. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. This is my husband, Danny, and you're watching Social Sunday, our weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us for Social Sunday. We're so excited to have you with us. Uh, we see Gina's watching, uh, Anne's also watching, uh, Kathleen from Idaho. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we're gonna chat about a few things and then I'll be answering some questions live at the end of the show and there's also a great giveaway, so stay tuned for that as well. So first thing to let you know about is the winner of the day trips Day Trip Sew Along Week 1 task is Beth Ruiz, so congratulations to you, Beth. Uh, be sure to email me after the show, sarah at sewsweetness.com, that's Sarah with no H, and I'll get you set up with your prize. Um, the Sew Along is being conducted over in the Facebook group, and every week there is a sp specific task, and to be eligible for the weekly prizes, all you need to do is post a photo photograph of your progress in that particular week's uh, photo album and you'll be automatically entered for that weekly prize. If you haven't joined yet, there's still time to jump in and again you can find that information over in the Facebook group. That so along is being hosted by Michelle Graham and Michelle is also hosting the Global So Sweetness Secret Spring Gift Exchange. I've linked to the gift exchange in the description of tonight's show. So check that out for more information on that. It's basically the spring version of the Secret Santa Swap. So lots of fun. Um, if you're considering joining, check out that information and you can get set up for that uh, really quickly. All right. Um, happy birthday to Karen. Oh, happy birthday, Karen. Hope you had a beautiful day today. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh. My kids watch a few specific shows on YouTube, and one of their favorite shows... Team they, Edge. Team Edge, yes. Oh, I got it right. <laughs> they do a segment on the show called Dope or Nope, and what they do is they have viewers recommend products that they should purchase, receive, and review on the show, and then they do, you know, they give you their um, opinions about the products. It's either Dope or Nope. So yes or no, thumbs up or thumbs down, that kind of thing. So my kids were telling me the other day that um, that you all, our viewers, should tell us what expensive products that, that we should review on the show. And I reminded them that, that I buy everything that I talk about on the show myself so we don't get freebies, which I think they kind of... Have you have you watched the Dope or Nope segments before? Uh, I, I thought they get stuff sent in. Do they buy all their stuff? I don't know. I, I I was confused if they were purchasing it or not. So I reminded my kids that I that I buy everything, and they they were like, "Oh, maybe you shouldn't do that then, because it's going to get really expensive." But if you have a an expensive sewing related product that you think I should talk about on the show, let me know in the comments. I'll see what I can do. I can't promise anything. Danny might be cutting me off from buying a lot of expensive things, but. I don't... I know you don't. Oh, I'm just goodness. joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'll just say, is that a new shirt? And that's all I say. I don't ever say, hey, why are you buying this stuff? It's so funny, though. I don't know if you're joking or not, but sometimes I'm wearing like a shirt that I've worn I, many I, times. I'm joking Okay, sometimes. I can't tell yeah. sometimes. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think it's just funny. Danny's second favorite part of uh, the Sunday show when he's on with me. We'd like to invite all the bag makers, um, which Danny's added this graphic uh to say also so sweetness squad thanks for being part of our squad watching the shows uh participating in the comments if you're in the facebook group which i know not everyone is but if you are thanks for being um supportive and part of the community over there as well and we really appreciate each and every one of you and um i don't know we really have fun doing the videos and live shows and um, we're glad that you're here along with us uh, for the ride right yep um, funny thing that I wanted to mention that, uh, so we visit my grandma, we call her Amma every Sunday. We didn't go last Sunday because Amma was busy. So we didn't go to see her last summer because she had something else to do. And so when I walked in the door this Sunday, today, this morning, um, she said, <laughs> she said, how come I had to find out 
from your show, What Happened to You? And I was like, well, what happened to me? Because <laughs> sometimes I have kind of short-term memory about Sarah's certain terrible things. terrible at communicating anything, <laughs> generally. <laughs> She's great with emails. Maybe we got to email her. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, Emma, what happened? And she said, uh, you know, you fell off your horse. And I was like, oh, it's, it's fine. Everything was okay. It, you know, it happens sometimes. And I just thought it was funny that she said she had to find out from the show, from the, so the Social Sunday show, what happened. Uh, I just got a kick out of that. Um, all right. Anything else that you wanted to add before we get over to some questions? No? Okay. How about my pick of the week? Oh, I forgot to write that on my outline. Thank you for remembering. Um, I was scouring through the Facebook group because it's been a few weeks since I've, I've done it. And uh, I found one. As you guys know, I love sci-fi. And I happen to love The Mandalorian on the Disney Plus network. And I, Baby Yoda's pretty awesome. So I found this awesome widget bag um andrea graham made this and uh i just love it it's a bunch of little baby yodas in the background with the other stuff but uh yeah sign me up i'll buy one right now <laughs> send me send a sarah an email and paypal address because i'd love to have that one that is awesome <laughs> i i really particular in particular loved the zipper pulls it kind of looked like they were glow in the dark maybe they were i was thinking that they were let's check it again okay don't they look like they would oh, yeah, be yeah, for sure. in the dark? Like that yeah. neon green? Yeah. yeah, that's very cool. I just imagine going to a restaurant where it's dark or somewhere for... Lights up. I know it's not summer yet, but like somewhere for fireworks or something and you have this glow-in-the-dark bag. Sounds really you know, cool. So you, you want to make it more cool? Mm -hmm. We get an LED light tape that has like AA batteries. You can get those and somehow attach it to a bag, maybe with some clear vinyl around where like a binding area would be. So it'd be like an LED rim around the widget. Hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I would ask Sarah, but I'm going to ask you guys because it's a better chance something like that would happen. I'd love to see a picture of it. <laughs> All right. So before, uh, let, let me back up just one second. If you have a question for me, let me know in the comments, um, either a bag making related question, question about an ocean or tool, general sewing question. Type your question right now in the comments on Facebook or YouTube. I'll be answering as many questions as I can live. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and that winner is Halisa, Halisa Yusuf. I hope I pronounced that correctly, so congratulations to you. Um, I've contacted you already on social media and just waiting to hear back from you, and we'll get you set up with your prize. So congratulations again, and we have another giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. All right, uh, let's see. There's some items to be reviewed. Oh, Audrey says a steam press. Um, I do not have a steam press. The reason I couldn't get one previously, didn't have room. we didn't have room, but in the new studio, there's a little bit more wiggle Maybe. room. I'll write that down. That's a good one to so review. I couldn't grab it fast enough because all the bag maker comments came through. Oh, okay. But um, it was an AccuQuilt. AccuQuilt. Uh, is, there an, is that not the whole thing? I saw AccuQuilt go by really quick. AccuQuilt is a company that makes... Um, uh, cutting dies to cut your fabric. Um, I actually have one from, I don't I want to say almost 10 years ago. I have the AccuQuilt Baby, and I might have about 10 dies. I'm not sure if they've advanced since then because I haven't followed that company super closely, um, but I'll write that down on my list along with the steam press, and I'll check it out after the show um, or maybe tomorrow morning and see what's what with that. Um, Susan says, uh, no on the LED lights, Danny. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I thought that would Sarah said in her head when I was talking about that stuff. It's like, Danny, this is not a computer. <laughs> Were there any other expensive sewing uh, That was really two I saw came through in popped? the middle of okay. those. Okay, yeah, I know it's hard. Sometimes the comments come through really quickly. Steam press is a good one, though. And, uh, yeah. Um, Linda says, anyone know where to buy good foam interfacing and shape flex in bulk? Um... That's a good question. I'm not sure I'd be the best one to answer that. I purchase my interfacing from a distributor, so I have a wholesale license. The distributor that I purchase from is Checker Distributors. Their website is www.checkerdist.com. Um, without a wholesale license, I'm not sure of the, the best source, but if anyone else has a tip for us, let us know in the comments, and Danny will check out. We'll be on the lookout for that. Um, how can I get your patterns from you? Um, our website is sosweetness.com, um, and that's S-E-W and then sweetness. We have patterns and videos for sale, and we also have a section uh, with free patterns. That's under the Tutorials tab on the website. And there's also a sub-tab under the Tutorials tab for all of our 
technique videos. So I think we've got maybe almost 60 videos so far. And these are all short, approximately 10 minute or less videos showing how to use different tools or use different bag making techniques. So those can all be found on the website. And if you need help looking for something specific, you can always email me. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Rolanda says, I really like how you use different materials in your bags. Have you ever used 100% polyester fabric or have any tips? I bought a very pretty piece with a bag in mind and not sure if I should treat it like normal quilting cotton. Any tips would be awesome. So I've used different substrates for bag making and depending on what the substrate was originally meant for, I might add a little bit of extra interfacing. So if, if I'm using fabric that most people would use for a garment like um, rayon fabrics. I've used um, cotton lawn and I've used uh, knit fabrics for bag making. And what I do with all three of those is I will first interface those with Pellon Shape Flex and that's a fusible woven interfacing. And what that does is takes out the stretch and or drape of those traditionally um, garment focused fabrics. And then I'll use the same interfacing as called for in the pattern. So. Um, you can, the polyester, I have not used polyester fabric for a bag before. Um, you might need to use a uh, sew-in interfacing instead of the fusible for that one. Um, but if you'd like to email me again, you can, and we can talk about that more in detail. All right. Sorry. It's okay. Let's see. Leah says, I accidentally bought lots of screen spline in the wrong size. Do you see any reason why it wouldn't work to use for piping? Rubber should hold up well. Screen spline. So if you have a screen on your window, it's okay. like a little rubber uh, rope almost like this right here that, okay. that holds the screen in a little slot. Oh, okay. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, I haven't used it personally, but I have purchased some store-bought bags before that had what seemed to be some sort of rubber or plastic or vinyl piping in the bag. So um, that's a really interesting idea. I, ha I admit I have not used that before myself. Kim says, is there a way you could do a tutorial on how to do flying geese on the widget bag like the front? Oh, that's interesting. I think Kim is talking about the widget messenger bag that Rock Baby Scissors made and she posted it on her Instagram. Um, she had some flying geese on the front. Um, that's, let me write that on my list. That's interesting. Flying geese. Um, Dawn says, is the four pack um, bundle special still on? So we decided this time, we've done something different in the past with the four pack video bundles. This time, since all four projects were brand new, we decided to make it a permanent bundle. So we have the bundle available with the four patterns and videos for $40, or you can buy them individually or you can just buy the patterns if you don't need the videos. Um, so all of those are available right now on the website and they will always be available at that current pricing. Wanda says, did you all ever decide on having t-shirts or coffee mugs with your logo? Uh, we kind of got um, stuck on a standstill with that. Uh, yeah, once we get more space, I, I would like to have apparel and you know, merch as they call it. Uh, I mm -hmm. think it'd be pretty cool. Um, Violet did have some nice designs she drew up. Um, I'd also like to have William involved with that and um, sort of do like a family in-house preliminary stuff. Maybe we can put it in the Facebook group or somewhere, even a poll on possibly YouTube for people that don't use Facebook um, and maybe vote on a design, start mm -hmm. with one and build out. Mugs might be difficult because I would assume chance for breaking and the, the size of the box might be challenging um, to Yeah, ship. we just haven't investigated yeah, it, Yeah, we have to look honest. into that, but shirts could definitely happen. We're still working on moving our items from our current house, which we're still in our current house right now, yep. to the new house, which Danny's working on setting up the studio so we can film, but it's not ready yet. And so I feel like once we move, all of our stuff will have more room for other items within reason, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. T-shirts, I'd love to have T-shirts, though. Yeah, I'd like to have T-shirts, yeah. too. Mary says, my Juki is pulling my stitches almost like gathering. Um, two things you might want to check and make sure everything's threaded correctly. Sometimes when things start going wrong with my stitching, I always re-thread the top thread and re-thread the bottom thread. Um, check that you have a new needle. Um, test out your tension after you've done those first two things. Um, I'm guessing either one of those two things are the culprits. Um, but if anyone else has another suggestion, let us know. And again, Danny will um, look for that over in the comments. 
Someone said they used that screen stuff last okay. week and it worked great. Okay, good. Thanks for piping in with that, Linda. Very helpful. Actually, yeah. Um, Karen says, have you been using your embroidery machine? I did use it. What did I use it for? Oh, over the holidays, I made two stockings, one for Smudge, which is the horse I ride, and one for our Bearded Dragon Flash. So I did use the embroidery machine just to stitch their names on the stockings. The embroidery machine is currently at the new house, and so... Um, uh, Hopefully, be using it soon. Meyer says, I don't know how to join the sew along. I just jumped on Facebook. Where do I go? Um, so Sweetness. Um, if you if you group. go to the, the So Sweetness Facebook group, depending on if you're looking on your cell phone or on your computer or, or laptop, there will be a tab either along the top or along the, the left bar for photos. After you click on that, there's a sub tab for albums. Um, when you click on the the album tab, the album link, you'll see the albums for each week for the sew along, and you can click um, each of the albums. So, for example, for week one was the the pre sew, the prep work, picking your fabric and interfacing. So you can click on the album for um, if you're starting off, you'll you'll click on the the first week. Um, I think, I'm not sure if Michelle pinned a, a post with the information for the sew along. I saw she's posted something else. Um, I'm not sure to be honest. Okay. What I saw actually was not the sew along. It was the, um, exchange. Oh, okay. I was thinking of the same thing. Um, my dirty iron made a mark on my fabric. Is there a way to get that? Is there a way to get that off? Um, I don't think that's ever happened to me before that I can recall. I'm going to have to send this back out to all the viewers. Um, let me know if this has happened before, what you did to get the, the dirty gunk off your, your fabric, if, if the iron kind of messed it up for you. Lindsay says, I'm looking to buy a grommet rivet press, uh, hand press machine. What dyes do you suggest I buy to get started and which ones do you use the most? So that's a great question. So tied for first place for the dies that I use the most. Um, I don't even know if there's a die for this for a hand press. I'm not sure because I, I use my tabletop press the most. Rivets and I also use the the hole punch die on my tabletop rivet press. The, the hole punch makes various sized holes and one of the holes that I use is for the holes for rivets. So those kind of tie together. I do use the grommets uh, occasionally, but not as often. Far and away, I use the rivets and the hole punch uh, the most out of everything. And I have multiple sizes for each. I think I have two or three different sizes for the grommets. Again, this depends on what you're using it for. Um, maybe two or different, two or three different sizes for the hole punch. And then, of course, the rivets. I'm generally using the same size rivets. Uh, Michelle, Michelle says, suggestion for marrying her juki, lessen her presser foot tension. This helps as well. Thank you so much, Michelle. Perfect. Um, and Kelly says, can you please post the soul along wallet link? I'm not getting notifications and can't find it. Um, I will try to jump on after the show and post it in the comments on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we could pin it on definitely YouTube. I'm not sure about Facebook. Okay. Thank we could put it in maybe in the com in the. Yeah, we can header. add it. Yeah. After the show, I can go ahead and add it. Michelle says, Sarah, do you use pressing hams when you make your bags? That's a great question. Um, not very often. I do have pressing hams. I have two different sizes. One is kind of like a, actual looks like a ham, and one's like a longer, thinner stuffed piece. Um, I, I use them more for garments, for like princess seams and those type of things, but they are helpful for bags as well, especially for maybe pressing the seam across the bottom of the bag. Um, the end of your ironing board is helpful for that that type of thing as well. Um, but I do have a couple of pressing hams. They must be already at the new house because I don't see them around here anywhere. And Charlie says, the shoemaker's pets have shoes. No embroidery for Danny, but the pets have stockings. You know, it's funny you say that, Charlie. <laughs> when she broke it out and started doing embroidery stockings, I'm like, oh, we're getting new stockings. I'm, you know, I'm getting excited. And she's like, no, it's not for you guys. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, just ran out of time there. Uh, Barbara says, what is the difference between a steam press and a heat press for attaching interfacing? Um, I didn't, you know what, since I don't have one, I guess I didn't know if there was a difference if one has steam and one doesn't, um, but I'll investigate it. I'm gonna check a bunch of reviews online and videos on YouTube, see which ones people are getting. Um, I probably can only afford to purchase one press and so, um, I'll look for the one that sounds like the best and I'll talk about it on the show once I get it. 
Laura says, is there a tutorial for no dent uh, zipper installation that doesn't involve zipper tabs? Um, no dent. I'm trying to think. Um, I'm not sure what you meant by no dent, but if you would like to follow up with your comments, um, again, Danny will be on the lookout for that. Donna says, I have never seen a seam ripper like the one you have used. Um, it is retractable. Um, I have it right here, actually. It's made by Seam Fix. I like it because it has these rubber tips on the ends and the rubber tips, what they do is once I've pulled the seams, I have all these tiny little threads because that's the way I don't pull the thread out neatly. I just kind of rip each seam and the rubber tips, if you glide it over your fabric and an eraser will, will serve the same purpose, but it pulls the threads out because of the rubber. Um, it just kind of sticks to it. How come you didn't let me use that seam ripper and let me know about that last week? We were prepping for the show. She gave me a seam well, ripper. I didn't ask you to pull. pull the. I didn't ask you to pull the threads out. Well, you I? said seam rip them, so I automatically assume pull the threads out. So I'm ripping, and I'm like trying to grab it to pull it out, and it's pretty tight. I'm like, that sounds way easier. Another pro tip, which again, <laughs> I didn't ask you to pull the threads out, but if you pull from the, um, I think the the back of the fabric, you should be able to see like one long thread. If you just pull that, the the threads in the front tend tend to fall out. I'll try to remember that next time. Yeah. Um, Diane says my Juki was doing that and I figured it out. I had my bobbin in backwards. Oh yeah, that would that would do it. Yeah, so definitely re-threading would help uh, troubleshoot at least that that area if it was the bobbin. I'm not, I'm not sure if this one. Um, questions about the website again in email. Say it please. Oh sure, the website is sosweetness.com. Um, S E W S W E E T N E S S dot com. My personal email is Sarah S A R A at sosweetness.com. Great question, thank you. Um, Maritha says, is there a website that shows the different sizes of zippers with the number of the size? For an example, I'm not sure what a size number three zipper looks like. Um, did we do a video on, yeah, I did do a video on different types of zippers. So if you check on the YouTube channel or on my website, if you're searching on YouTube, you can just type in um, different types of zippers. If you'd prefer to Google it, you could just type in So Sweetness different types of zippers. Um, I walk you through all the different types that I use in bag making and I show the different types. I think I even talked about metal zippers and how to remove the teeth. A number three, a number three zipper is also known as a dress skirt zipper. Let me grab, since I'm not hooked up to a mic, I can grab it from back here. Um, okay, so I have, I know I don't have an overhead camera to show you, but the number three dress skirt zipper generally has the small pull, has the smaller teeth, and it can be either nylon or metal. Um, the handbag zipper, as you can see, is is wider, generally has a longer pull, longer slash bigger pull, and also bigger teeth. So this one has um, nylon teeth that look like metal. Um, some patterns, some of my patterns I specify to use a particular type of zipper depending on how the design goes together or I guess how I intend. Um, handbag zippers generally are easier to sew in. They have wider zipper tape, um, especially on my machine. I know every machine's different. I can sew handbag zippers with my regular foot, which I like. Um, this zipper, the number three zipper, I'd have to use my um, zipper foot to sew this in. Um, but again, every machine varies slightly with the, the feet that they offer. It needs to be for a review. Um, Karen says, I have found my cordless, cordless iron is great. Oh, I do not have a cordless iron, but I will write that on the list of expensive uh, sewing gadgets that my kids said I should review on the show. Monique says, any recommendations for glues or adhesives to attach foam to fabric or vinyl? So I have not used this myself. I've had friends in the past... Um, with varying degrees of success, use uh, spray base, like quilt spray basting spray to attach fabric to foam interfacing. Some of them liked how it turned out. Some of them didn't as far as uh, wrinkles or puckers. Um, June Taylor makes a basting spray if you're looking to try that out. I've used it in the past for basting uh, quilt tops to the batting and the backing fabric. Um, I have not used it for uh, the fabric to interfacing though for bags. Karen says, want to buy your LED logo and mug? A So Sweetness pin or brooch would be very nice. Just wishing. Uh, yeah, pins would be really great and they're small and light mm -hmm. to ship. Yep. 
pins. Um, logo mug. Okay. Write that on the There's list. There's some bag maker ones. Yeah, that would be really cool. Mary says, how can I make my sewing door glide better on plastic? Sewing door. I'm blanking on this question. Maybe it's on the sewing machine, the door that flaps open or something. I, I don't know either. I'm just doing my best. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so sorry, Mary. Send um, Sarah an email. You can send Sarah's me an email. So sweetness. Yes, thank you. I want to make a graphic. That would be, like be good. Like... Actually, you, prob Boom. you probably should make a graphic. That would be really handy. I can do it. Okay. Um, what was that other question? You kind of set it up for me and then pulled it away. Do this. That was the one. Corey says, if you were making a wallet, would you put interfacing in all the pockets? So you could put ShapeFlex interfacing in all the pockets. Um, I've seen some people that actually add ShapeFlex and then have some uh, Decoville, uh, not Decoville, um, Decker Bond or... Decoville light in the pockets to make them a little bit less flimsy. So there's a bunch of options. Um, depending on what kind of project you're working on, you may want to cut the interfacing minus the seam allowance so that you don't have tons of bulk um, in your seams. Um, oh, okay. Same lady. Perfect, Mary. Thank you. How can I make my sewing machine foot glide better when sewing plastic or vinyl? So you have two choices. Uh, Teflon foot, which is um, basically a foot that looks uh, white, white and plasticky looking. The Teflon helps the foot glide over items that it might generally stick to, like vinyl, clear vinyl, leather, or a walking foot. So one of either of those two things, whichever you're more comfortable with. I usually use my Teflon foot. Can you show us how to print labels with a printer on fabric for our bags? I will, yeah, that would. That's pretty interesting. That is interesting labels. Um, I will add that to the list of, ex not a, it's really not an expensive thing, but I'm going to add that to the list with the cordless iron and the steam press and the AccuQuilt. Thank you. Kelly says, what size rivets do you use the most cap size? Um, I like the eight millimeter rivets with, I think the post length that I generally use is six millimeter post length. Um, I do have some nine millimeter rivets, but I usually use the eight millimeter rivets the most. Um, Corey says, cleaning out the lint from the bottom bobbin housing helps with stitch problems as well. Oh, thank you so much for mentioning that, Corey. Yeah, definitely keeping your sewing machine cleaned, oiled, and working. And don't forget to get occasional checkups with your sewing machine technician just to make sure to curtail any problems that might arise. Um, Erica says, I love the fabric on the bag behind Danny with the flowers. What fabric did you use for that bag? So that one is... This is the <laughs> uh, triple threat briefcase. This is a digitally printed fabric from RJR Fabrics, and the fabric line is called uh, Arcadia. I purchased this from Etsy. I think last time I was on Etsy, I saw a few uh, listings still available, but um, it's really pretty. The colors are so bright in person. Aren't they really bright? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I love this. Yeah. I, Very vivid. I do like vibrant. some digital digitally printed fabrics. They still feel as nice as the other quilting cottons that I get. Which companies do digital verse? Um, Hoffman one? Fabrics has a lot of good digital prints. Again, you can just do a search on Etsy for Hoffman Fabrics digital. RJR Fabrics has some nice feeling digital prints. Um, those are the two most common ones that I that I see. I'm sure other companies have them as well. but. Logo. Thank you. Um, is the Cricut Explorer Stop. 2... Stop. I love the participation. There's so much participating going on tonight. I see a million comments, tons of likes, a ton of sharing. I think we should stop right now and do a giveaway of the people in the comments. Um, okay. This was not scripted because Danny likes to give stuff away. So, <laughs> uh, I think we should do two $40 gift certificates in case people not have the new okay. set of patterns. Our, um, I just had a question because you're seeing all the comments come through and I'm answering so I don't see them generally. Are they helping each other as well? Oh as... yeah, everyone's okay. being very uh, cool. helpful. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Let me answer this question first before I forget. Um, the Cricut Explorer, so I don't have the Cricut Explorer, but I have, the, question. I have the Cricut Maker, which is um, just a different tier of cutter. Um, the Cricut Maker is awesome for bag making. You can cut other materials like... Um, 
your foam interfacing. Um, what else? Uh, vinyls for projects. Um, I made some t-shirts last year using some iron on vinyls, which were really cool. The t-shirts came out cool, right? Yeah, they were very cool. So yeah, very useful. I actually wanted to make some, but that just like my bag in the past, you know, just it's a fleeting. Well, the Cricut idea. Maker is also at the new house, and so it's uh, I'm excited to get the machine set up. Um, Have okay. you seen the Cricut Joy Roll Fest? The what? I saw that a lot. What is it? Is it Cricut Joy? It's like a small maker, really small, but it's, oh. you can make it really long, continuous. I think it's got, a, it's really small, maybe like this big, and it feeds, I think, stuff. I don't know. It. I saw Christina say something about it, but I didn't really investigate it. So Maybe I, that could be on one of the things to review. Uh, is, it, is it expensive, though? I Cricut think it Joy? is. I saw in people's comments. Oh, I, don't I don't know. Don't, yeah, we'll see. All right. Um, all right, let's give something away. All right, I'll let you handle this. Or do, I, right. have to, or do I have to handle it? No, let, we'll do an old page okay. of comments. So I'll do the third to last. Okay. Actually, I'll do fourth to last, because I'll do pre-show commenting which is great um and the first number i see people put in this comment right now that pops through the comment screen that'll be the number on the page so someone type a number in and that number will be the one i choose on the what do you mean page. someone type a so number? anyone like in the comment right now you could put whatever number one through 20 oh okay you don't want a i should probably say me? no let's oh. let them get involved sir okay it's not always about you okay <laughs> just to clarify we're gonna do another giveaway at the end of the show and that's for Anyone who watches yeah, even the recording. It looks like some people are saying the circuit or the Cricut Joy is 149 to 179. Oh, that's uh, not too expensive. The first number I see is seven. Okay. It's on my page that came through. Uh, let's tap down. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. Wendy, Hi, Bronson. Put that cleared out. Wendy Simpson's the first live winner. Congratulations, Wendy. Just email me after I'm the sure show. I'm pretty sure she's just talking to Bronwyn. Yeah. Okay, right. let's do uh, the second, the last number we see on this page, and uh, the fifth page, so it's a relatively recent. So okay. 13 on the fifth page. So we'll do seven up. Three, six, seven. Okay, Jean Alvarez was the second live winner. Congratulations. Boom. Thanks for everyone. The participation is amazing. It really helps, and uh, I think you guys should be rewarded totally. Okay, awesome. Good idea. All right, let's go back to comments. Oh, uh, yeah. Questions, you mean? Questions, comments, okay. concerns, all of the above. Okay. Do you use a Taylor's clapper, Sarah? Maria wants to know. Um, I, ha I do have one. I don't use it very often. Um, it's basically like a wooden piece. Some of them have handles, and it's has a little weight to it. So it's helpful with pressing seams because it kind of seals your steam in there when you're pressing the seams, especially handy for if you're pressing the top area of a bag before top stitching to make it nice and crisp and flat before you go through with the top stitching. Um, I probably should use mine more. I have a lot of tools that are nifty, but I'm not exactly in the habit of using them. So it's not a habit to reach for them, even though they are helpful. I should probably... You know what comes to mind right away when I what? think of filming? What? The pinking shares. Uh, so many people yes. say the pinking shares are great, but you know what Sarah does every video? And if you watch the videos, you'll know. Do, 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 she makes do. little triangles <laughs> all over. It's totally true. I... And everyone says, oh, use the pinking shares, you know, and I'm like... Maybe you should try the pinking shares. I totally agree. The pinking shares are so much easier, but it's just one of those things. It's like embedded Creature in my head. Habit. Yeah, this is how we cut it, and so this is how I always cut it. <laughs> um, hello, Sarah. I'm currently using a Janome New Home and looking to update to a Juki DX7. I am mostly making bags and also sewing garments every once in a while. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't recall off the top of my head if the DX7, is that the one that's computerized with the different stitches? Um, if it is, I don't think I've sewn on that one before, but I believe... I could be wrong, but I believe my friend Vanessa at the Crafty Gemini, Vanessa at the Crafty Gemini, did I, I say that wrong? I was going to say on her sewing retreat yes. cruise. I think she has a video on her YouTube channel. Again, that's Crafty Gemini for reviewing that particular sewing machine. Um, I hope I'm right, but I think that's the one. Yeah. So check out her review video. She does great sewing machine review videos. And she's got a great connect for Yes, definitely. sells them. Um, Jane says heat press doesn't have steam. Oh, interesting. Um... Yeah, they're saying that there's other comments too, but that was the first one. So okay. the, you know, heat press uses no steam, and a steam okay. press obviously yeah, uses. Yeah, it sounds it sounds obvious. Steam. Okay, I'll have to look. Yeah, I, like I said, I haven't investigated. I got another one. I'll, I'll comment to follow. Um, up Pamela says, Sarah, do you use the wool mat? If so, what size and where did you purchase and cost, please? So we're currently out of stock on the wool mats that we carry. We carry this 17 inch by 17 inch wool mats. I have that size, and I also have a really big size that I bought. It's like the length of our table, and that's the one we use when we film videos. If you've watched any of our 
videos, the overhead view. That's a really, really huge map. I guess it's 34 by 17. Uh, I it's almost like two of them side by side. Maybe. I don't know. It might be 48 inches long. I'm not sure. Uh, Mary says the heat press gets really hot to adhere to vinyl. Steam press releases wrinkles in the fabric. Oh, okay. I might need the steam press then. <laughs> I'm thinking about might, it. Might, maybe, possibly. You know, it's so funny. I'm getting Just ordered it. I'm getting excited <laughs> thinking about like the smallest of expensive products that I wrote down because it's like my kids have given me permission through giving me this job to buy some, a few expensive things. <laughs> I mean, they're not super expensive. It's not like there's a sewing machine in the I was going to say, but... literally in my head, I'm like, oh, it's not like a sewing machine. Right. I already have an embroidery machine. I feel fairly comfortable with the sewing machine <clears throat> that I have, and I don't feel like I need to get a different one. So good news for you, right? Why? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Diana says, is Orifil thread good for sewing faux leather? I couldn't find that answer online. So I have used it for sew le uh, faux leather many times. Um, it is 100% cotton. Um, I get this question often if polyester thread's okay too. Polyester thread is also completely okay for bag making. I guess it just depends on what you prefer or what you may already have in your stash just so you don't have to go out and buy a lot of extra things. Kathleen says, uh, Sarah, what brand of tabletop press do you use? So my rivet press I purchased years ago. I've had it for so long. Um, I purchased from a shop on Etsy called Minkus Margot. And the reason I purchased from them was they had really customer, ser really great customer service even throughout the years. I, I periodically have questions about things. I just send them a message on Etsy. Um, I get a reply really quick, and I just like. They have a really huge uh, section of different dyes and different applications, and I just really like that shop. So, Margaret says you need an IVAC in your new studio, but get the pet version. You just sweep your threads into it, and it all gets picked up. I love mine. I vac. Um, are you familiar with that vacuum? No, I've never heard of it. I know that's not strictly sewing related, but that might be. Would that be a good thing to review on the show? Like the uh, if it's a vacuum cleaner, that sounds. Uh, I mean, interesting. I think it's helpful for sewing, and it, you know, sweep your. There's a problem. And oh it's wait, a solution. I vac. You just sweep your threads into it, and all gets picked up. And I'll have to investigate that. That that sounds really yeah, cool. I'll do a quick search. Okay. I'm looking. I vac. It might be I. Oh, it is an IVAC with an. Oh, are you questioning my spelling ability? No, no, no. Well, you should have because. Wow, there's a lot of good reviews on Amazon. Okay, well let's. It's a stationary vacuum, so I get. A stationary. So it says. Who? So you just. I guess it sits on your desk and you just push it towards it. Oh. Or maybe you keep it near wherever you're sewing and just turn it on and let's suck stuff up. That sounds like something to investigate. Thank you for that suggestion, Margaret. Yeah, it says. Wow, I've never. She said, "Get the pet one." So this down. is the pet one she's speaking of. The pet one. Okay, I'll write that down. Huh. Very interesting. Yeah, get the pet version. Very cool. Awesome. All these things that I have not heard of before. <laughs> so we have it's community. Cindy says you could put your logo on things like seam rippers and rulers. Oh, that's a great idea. Especially the seam rippers. Um, what are your thoughts on the Aliso Smart Iron? They look cool. So. <clears throat> I have used that particular iron um, a few times. It threw me because I I don't have that type of iron in the studio and how that iron works is when you take your hand off the handle, it raises on a little platform so you don't have to put it on its side so that it doesn't burn your ironing board. It just uh, lifts up when you're done ironing with it. So it, it I think the purpose was lost on me because I was in the habit of my regular iron. And so even though it's a smart iron and it's supposed to do the work for you, I just kept wanting to put it back on its side. So I did test that particular iron years ago. I want to say almost maybe seven or eight years ago, I did a review on irons for this blog called So Mama So. I reviewed five different irons. I either purchased or borrowed or some company sent me irons in the mail. And I tested all the irons on different types of fabrics, if they got the wrinkles out, if the iron felt heavy. And so um, if you Google Sew Sweetness and Iron Reviews, I think that post should come up. It was quite a lengthy post. And like I said, it was some years ago, so maybe from 2012. But one of the irons that I reviewed for that side-by-side um, -side comparison is one that I still use today, and that's the Singer Expert Finish Iron. But I do like the Oliso irons. Um, they're just a little bit... Uh, you know, a little bit more of a pricey iron. And again, it has that nice feature of rising on that platform when you're done with it, though. 
Um, Jen says vinyl stickers that's for our sewing idea, machines. Too. Oh, that's a great idea. And those, yeah, those would be really light and easy to ship. Vinyl stickers. We could probably just put those uh, in everyone's package, right? Be pretty cool. That's a great idea. Um, Doreen says, getting back to the Cricut, is there a way to cut to make cut files, SVGs for all of your bags? So I heard the other, someone emailed me the other day that um, I don't have a Silhouette machine, mine's a Cricut, but someone told me that the Silhouette was coming out with a 20 inch wide um, cutting space in their new machines. I don't know when that machine's coming out. The Cricut Maker, my mat is 12 inches by 24 inches, so it's a like a 12 inch cutting space, 12 inch wide. So for that size cutting space, I can't I can't really cut many bags on there just because it's just not wide enough. Because um, you can't cut bag pattern pieces on the fold; they have to be like the whole piece, both halves. But a 20 inch wide, you certainly could cut a lot of bags on there. Um, the problem is, uh, I think that's the first one that's that wide, and so. Not currently available for all machines, but um, definitely as the mats get wider in these cu electric cutting machines, more possibilities for being able to cut bags instead of small things like pouches. Jackie says, it, it, it is useful when using the wool press to get the seams flatter. Um, yes, definitely my wool, my wool pressing mat, um, the wool kind of holds the steam in there and so it's it's getting hot and heating up the steam from both sides, the side with the iron and the side with the, the wool on it. Linda says, my pinking shears are really stiff. Why? Um, it might depend on the, the brand of pinking shears. I have a pair from Kai, which are fairly smooth. And then I have another pair from, it might be Fiskars, but I'm not 100% sure. And oh, is it the orange handle one? Yeah, one yeah of, I think it's Fiskars. One of them is stiffer than the other. The Kai ones are definitely a lot smoother might just be the brand. I'm not sure if you or can if you do could anything. do it like lubricating oil. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was just going to say I'm not sure if you can do anything about yep. that or not. Have you ever used a hammer to flatten seams? Um, I've not used a hammer, but I've used a rubber mallet before just a couple times, not, not extensively. Um, but that is definitely helpful for helping to flatten the seams. Um, yep. Sherry says, with zippers by the yard, if I need a nine inch zipper, would I cut it to nine inches or add an inch for each end. Um, so if you need, so one thing that I should mention about zippers, zipper manufacturers measure the length of a zipper. Is there a short zipper over here? Zipper manufacturers, if you buy a zipper at the store, measure the, oh, this is not what I'm looking for, sorry. All right, <laughs> zipper manufacturers measure the length of a zipper from the metal zipper stop to the metal on the other end. So in every zipper, there's a little bit of extra tape on either side. So Say if this is a nine inch zipper, they're only measuring from the metal to the metal and then it's a it's actually a little bit longer than nine inches. If your pattern calls for a nine inch zipper, you might wanna read ahead in the pattern to see some of my patterns, I have you trim the zipper to an exact amount, so maybe eight and three quarters of an inch. And in that case, having a nine inch zipper, nine inch measured zippered by the yard would be plenty because you'd have a little bit of extra. So I guess it depends on the pattern, but just know that when you buy a zipper at the store, the tape is a little bit longer than the actual um, number on the packaging. Holly says, my heat press, I use a spray bottle and will miss my fabric. Use Teflon sheets attached to the top and the bottom plates. Oh, that's great. That's great information. Thank you so much, Holly. I feel like there's so much to investigate as far as the steam press goes. So um, I do like spending time on the internet and investigating things, though. I know you do too, right? I'm a research guru. <laughs> Debbie says, do you use vegan leather or sell any? So... We don't sell any actual leather products in our shop, but we do sell cork, which some people call it cork leather. It's not leather. It's just um, fabric made from a sustainable source, a sustainable source which, which is cork oak trees in Portugal. We sell that. We sell faux leather, which is just um, another name for fake leather or vinyl. And we sell glitter vinyl in the shop as well. So no, no animal products in any of those. Susan says, in the bag making groups I'm in, the heat press seems to be the favorite. Many recommend not using water in your press, but spritz with water bottle if needed. Okay, so that's good information. Kind of directs me in a certain way. I'm going to write that down too. Thank you. Okay, I see you're closing your laptop, so I'm Shut assuming the... you're calling it on the questions. Questions have been completed. Thank you, everyone, for the really, really great questions tonight. Yeah, I apologize. great participation. I apologize if I did not get to anyone's everyone's oh, there's questions. there's a lot of questions yeah, I know. you didn't get to. I'm telling you that now. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that. Sorry about that. 
Um, but we're going to get over to our giveaway for tonight. We're going to give away another $40 gift certificate to SoSweetness.com. You can spend it on anything you'd like, patterns, hardware, cork, uh, whatever. All you have to do to be entered into the giveaway is to type your answer to my question in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching our show. And my question is, when you were little, what did you want to be? Um, what did you want to be? A lawyer. Oh, you did? I didn't know that. Yep. I could see that because you're kind of, I don't want to say argumentative. argumentative. Absolutely. <laughs> Sarah's called me a know-it-all. I've heard it all. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It just makes me want to argue more. I wanted to be a veterinarian or maybe an author. Veterinarian didn't work out because I'm my weakest subjects in school were always math and science. So big part that's of that. kind of what you need to be a veterinarian. Yep. Um, but I swear they have these little phones. I know I'm going to my doctor and they'll pull out little app and the app tells them exactly dosages and whatever mathematical skills you're missing but i did read something recently um regarding asking people what their job was or what they want to be when they grow up um i think it was the actor heath ledger said something about um why don't people why do people ask you those types of questions and why don't they ask you instead um are you happy or when you were little you know when i was little i just wanted to be happy that kind of thing so i thought that was pretty interesting also not tied to Most a, kids are usually happy that I know, so... Yeah, I know. I'm just saying as an adult, you know, like, that would be a great question to ask at a dinner party or something instead of, what's your job? Oh, what makes you happy? Like, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, what makes you happy instead? I don't know. What makes you happy, sir? Sewing, doing Good stuff answer. with the family, playing... We played uh, Hawaiian Rummy today at my grandma's house. I like playing cards together because everyone talks and sometimes people get upset <laughs> most of the kids <laughs> <laughs> um riding horses reading books yeah, i thought horses would be higher on your list there it maybe we're just saving the best for the last <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what about you uh, since we're talking about this real quick i just hang out with my end. kids honestly sarah so much but mostly my kids <laughs> That's honestly the truth. I like I spend time with them, enjoying yeah. you know, doing stuff together. Honestly, we have good conversations and yeah. Now they're just, getting older; it's more fun. They're like they're more of a friend than a, a kid, you know. Yeah. Even though I true. shouldn't be their friend, right? I should be their parent. But if you know me outside of here, I'm very immature, so I'm right at their age level. So we're <laughs> really good, good together right now. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching Social Sunday. Uh, we hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, Bye -bye. everybody.